woman is different. She's incredible. She's just like me. She talks like me. She acts like me. I just realized what's going on. Now I know what I've been looking for all these years. Myself. <laughs>
realesttracks.net. Yeah, big talking brewskis. Marissa Smith is who you see. Wanna call a combo in here? Crack a call while we're on the air. Big talking brewskis. Marissa Smith is who you see. Why the cooler combo in here? Crack the cool while we're on the air. Kicking back, having a few beers, we're chatting. Pull up your chair, we're all relaxing. Any subject, we never dismiss. Big talk and brewskis with Marissa Smith. Comedy, sex, relationships, more. Any subject, we got it in store. Big talk and brewskis is coming in live. Crack when no bin, Marissa has arrived. Big talking hey with guys, Smith. happy Friday! It's Big Talking yeah. Brewskies. It's the first one of 2018, you guys. Woo. I'm Marissa Smith. I've got Rodney Daniels with me. What's up, guys? Happy Friday. First Friday of 2018. We're doing it, you guys. We made it. We made it to 2018. And then, uh, do we have Sarah on the line? You do have me on the line. What's going on? Happy New Year, guys. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. We got Sarah Dillon with us. So, uh, yeah. so, uh, uh, Rodney, how, how was your week? Uh, my week was good. You know, I celebrated uh, New Year's at a gay bar. The first time I've like been to like a gay bar on New Year's. And it was actually quite nice. All the bartenders were dressed up. And there was like a champagne toast at midnight and like you know just surrounded by a bunch of like black and latino gay guys so it was you know the oh, ideal new year for me no, <laughs> uh sarah how was your new year's it was fucking awesome um i mean it was pretty cold so i just uh i ended up staying in uh with my boyfriend and uh we had like a candlelight shower with like nina simone and shit it was uh oh hey Hello. yeah <laughs> good way to ring in the new year absolutely <laughs> definitely that's yeah. awesome yeah it was like the coldest mm-hmm. new year's in like a hundred years or something like that like yeah. broke a record it was crazy yeah since crazy like cold. the 50s or 60s or something which is apropos for uh you know how far back we've gone uh, via <laughs> the United States. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh it's it's it was crazy. Marissa, um, how was your New Year's? Um I had a fun New Year's. Uh I got completely hammered with a bunch of my girlfriends. As and, you should. I, you know, cuz fuck 2017 and mm-hmm. I um I I kissed a 24-year-old. <laughs> Hey now! Hey, I'm an all star. Get your game what, a to, what a way to bring in the new year, right there. 2018, I fucks with you. Um, yeah, so I I probably have not kissed a 24 year old since I was 18. Um, <laughs> Get your game on, go play. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, too bad. Like he was hot. He was like six five. He was like really good looking, but Ooh. boring as fuck. Like you know, like, uh, don't you hate that? Like when like they're so great on the exterior, and then you try to talk to them, and you're just like, uh, you don't have a fucking brain. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it was I so like bad. I didn't even dude sex idiots. Yeah, exactly. Like I, I didn't even ask him for his number. I was just like, all right, see you later. Like <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go uh, find my friends. <laughs> Just a little, uh, little hit and run for you. There. It, it was just kind of <laughs> like, you know, like I wanted to kiss for the new year. I got it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> See ya. Uh, new year, new me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The old me would have stuck Tried around it. and asked for your number and asked you what your ambitions were. The new me is like, you're 24 and boring. Bye bye. <laughs> 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 so, uh, Sarah, what is a pansexual? So, um, I actually, I like to tell my friends I identify as a, a dead pansexual, right? Uh, I'm just <laughs> like, you know, I don't really care what you got going on down there, up here, you know, it's like, as long as you make me laugh, you know, like where my spirit lives, you know, we're cool. <laughs> But um, basically, I mean, um, to be, to identify as pansexual 
is uh, to be attracted to someone for, uh, you know, who they are, like their personality, their mindset, hopes, dreams, and, you know, could be that ass too, that's fine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's who you are as a person as opposed to, you know, what's on the, what's on the outside. So, um, that's, uh, that's kind of how I roll, uh, sort of gender neutral, flowy on the spectrum, all that good stuff. So, yeah, that's, uh, So now, what's the difference between it? pansexual and bisexual? So bisexual is more you are either attracted to a female or a man or, or a male. Um, it is it's specifically um, like uh, I guess genitalia related, um, whereas pansexuality is more of a spiritual thing. It doesn't really matter, you know, what you got going on. I mean, you basically. I can be attracted to you whether you're male, female, trans, gender neutral, however you identify, as long as, like, we vibe kind of on a spiritual level, like, you know, I fuck with you kind of deal. <laughs> so yeah. have you ever been with a transsexual sexually? Um, I have been with a transsexual before they transitioned um so i'm i mean they were kind of going through the transition as we were together and uh we both were sort of simultaneously um discovering our sexuality through that relationship which was uh you know exciting and enlightening for both of us and you know a lot of fun so, um, I don't know, it's, um, you know, what's so great about New York City in general is that, you know, there's so many souls and spirits and, you know, different stories, people from all sorts of, you know, walks of life, and it's like, I'm into them for who they are, what they do, uh, what, you know, the love and light they bring into the world, and, you know, we have a good time, like, you know, that's really, I mean, I think that's what we're all kind of looking for. It's like, yeah, that person that not only your partner, but your best friend, you know, is into the same kind of things you are, lifts you up, makes you laugh, like, you know, makes a killer fucking ramen on a Saturday night. It's like, that's really, you know, <laughs> that's what I dig. <laughs> so, like, I don't know, I guess because I'm old. So, like, I I feel like. I'm I'm not really completely understanding the difference between a pansexual and a bisexual because I feel like if you're bisexual, you're attracted to people with either sets of genitalia, which I feel is the same thing as a pansexual. Well, no, because this the difference is that a bisexual person would not be attracted to a transsexual person because mm -hmm. a transsexual Why? is different than because the transsexual has both male and female parts or neither depending on where they're at in their transition right mm -hmm. but if you're or even an asexual person who isn't into sex at all but you know i am attracted to that person because of what kind of things they're into how they make me feel you know when you meet a person and you kind of just like have that energy connect you're like yeah like this person you know it's like it's <laughs> it sounds all hippy dippy, just like you know I like your vibe, like that kind of thing. I mean, it's not just like oh you're male, you're female. It's like however you want to you know identify whatever you feel, want, need, all that stuff is you know it's it's secondary to just you know your hobbies, your likes, your interests, you know your sense of humor, music you like, whatever. It's but like I don't, it's more I don't... about the things you do, yeah. I don't understand how, like, a bisexual wouldn't be interested in a transsexual because, like, they, if they, let's say, they identify as the opposite sex of that person, but their genitalia is of the same sex, like, they are both interested in the gender that that person identifies as and is interested in the genitalia they possess. 
true. Um, that's that is that's that true. Is, that, that I'm sorry, like that's just the old woman coming say, out of me. But like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. like let's say for instance, uh, like you know, if you were bisexual mm-hmm. and you were mm-hmm. interested in a trans man. That trans man right. could be pre-op, being that you're bisexual, you're physically okay with having sexual relationships with someone that has the same genitalia as you, and being that you're bisexual, you're also emotionally okay with being with someone that has a, the opposite side of genitalia, that would be the opposite gender of you, so like, I don't understand. Now, the asexual thing that she brought up, now that's another component that I can say, okay, this This is slightly different because, all right, this is an asexual person, but that asexual person could still be cisgendered. So, like, they, Mm -hmm. you know, still... What's cisgender? You identify as the gender you were born into. Am I right on that? Mm -hmm. Or am I just making shit up? Oh, no, that's true. Yeah, you're just... You were born a woman. You identify as a woman. You... That's your whole... That's your whole bag there. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say, I mean, it's kind of, it's relative. It's a subjective thing. It's like you yourself feel the most comfortable identifying as, hey, I am bisexual. And whoever, you know, your partner is a person you're interested in. If they identify as male, female, you are attracted to, you know, who they are, how they identify. It's like, you know, I mean, like I said, uh, you know, in these, this day and age, it's like, you know, it's the whole, like, how people identify is, like, very fluid. It's very loose. I mean, I feel like even when someone asks me, like, oh, well, you find yourself more attracted to a man, to a woman, to whatever, it's like, well, I mean, it's more like a spiritual connection. It's like, because those sort of, um, I guess, uh, like, pigeonholes those little boxes of like how do you mark yourself as like those can be kind of limiting i mean i feel like you know you're just you love the person for who they are and they identify as kind of like whatever i'm pans like however you want to identify as cool however i want to identify as cool it's like you know we're all just in this thing together whatever it is um no but, i i you know, it's i get that have you ever dated an asexual I have not personally. Yeah, I don't know how that works, cause like right, cause like if you like sex but the other person doesn't, how is that different than just friendship? Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I know, right? I was, like, I was like, ooh, we could really get into this, <laughs> right? Uh, right, cause I I'm, mean, I dated a magician. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Did he have magic hands? <laughs> magic hands. <laughs> it's right. the magic <laughs> stick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pull something out of my hat. <laughs> <laughs> there uh, a rabbit in there? What's going on? <laughs> so, well, oh, that man. wasn't the I rabbit mean, that I was expecting, I, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I feel like if you're dating an asexual person, but like, would they like expect you to not have sex, but you're sexual? I don't, I don't get how that would work. I did I date mean, someone that became asexual a, after we a broke love up. Sort. What's that? Sorry. So I dated someone that became asexual after we broke up. Mm. You fucked all the sex mm. out of him. <laughs> like he's like I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I don't even want any more. <laughs> Like I'm good. I'm good. I'm whatever, full. whatever happened to never too much, never too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Luther Vandross, man, what's up? I don't know. Um, I've, I've definitely I've yeah, dated people I, mean, I, I became like asexual after, and I've dated people I became homosexual after. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's just like sometimes it's just like where you're at in your life. I mean, before I, you know, went to New York City and met, you know, I, you know, I became involved in the queer community in regards to like, you know, art, entertainment, all that stuff. I didn't really have like a way to explain how I always felt when I was younger, you know, just being attracted to a just, you know, wide array of people like men, women, you know, even before, um, you know, the term uh, trans was a thing that was, you know, um, 
wi- as widely accepted and out there as it, like as much as it, as it is now it's like i didn't really have i never met a person who was like oh yeah i felt those things so i mean the great thing about the city is that yeah you get to meet those people and you know in the queer community that are just like yeah yeah, yeah. like you know it's cuz you know back back in Connecticut i always felt like like, oh man, you know, I have a crush on my best friend and, you know, what's going on here? And I felt, you know, because because also I was raised Irish Catholic, so imagine the crushing guilt <laughs> associated yeah. with that whole thing, which is a whole other topic. Uh, it's just like, oh, I felt, you know, because for so long I was raised with this dogma of like, there's one right way to live and righteousness and a man and a woman and this and that and... You know, when you're kind of raised with these, like, gender roles and ideas of normalcy, it's like, that can be limiting, and that can also, you know, sort of uh, prevent you from, like, you know, really realizing and, like, looking in yourself and being like, hey, this is who I am, and this is fine, and, you know, I just, I love these people for who they are, and I think, you know, as long as you're you're spreading love, it's like, it's all good, you know? Red Love is the Brooklyn way, as a, <laughs> as a wise man once said. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, because like you're not, you're definitely not the first person that I've like met or talked to or even had on the show that identified as pansexual. But mm-hmm. it's always like something that like, I I guess like kind of like just being like out of that kind of generation that I'm just like, mm-hmm. you kids are all bi. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like, I just, it's, 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 it's like, I don't, I don't necessarily understand, because like pan, like, I, I feel like when you use the term pan, if you're like, uh, just going like specifically by definition, that means that you're also could be like, like pan is encompasses all it means like everything so like you could be Mm -hmm. into dead people you could be into animals like you could be into like all this different shit and like so like you could be into like fucking minerals and vegetables and shit like so like I, a thing. I, mean, like, I do have my crystal collection and my chakras are totally aligned. Just saying that was my like, you <laughs> know, like your your rubbing. next crush could be an amethyst if you're paying like that's just kind of right? like, like, you know, right. like that <laughs> that amethyst is looking real purple right now. And the moon is mm-hmm. aligned just right. I just want to stick it in my vagina. It's just like, you know. Uh, Honestly, I don't know what it is, but whenever there's like a full moon, like my vagina gets a little tingly. I don't know if it's just like, mm, it's just like Mother Moon is just speaking to me, like the tides are rolling in. I don't know, but it yeah, is it's, like it's the hormones. I, I don't know. <laughs> I was just like whatever. I'll talk to the moon about it. It's fine. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I always. I, I tend to end up in the wrong person's bed in the full moon. It's just uh, the fucking hormones. <laughs> like, <laughs> right? <I know. laughs> oh, man. Yes. It's yes. just like I told yeah, I mean, myself I'd never come back here again. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> but here we are with a 24 year old sex idiot. Oh, well. <laughs> it's just like, oh. Uh, yes. It's just like I'm leaving that in 2017 until the next full moon. Uh, how you do it? Right. Um, Which is. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I feel that and I feel like um, like a couple of days before your period, it's just like another like that's like another like, I don't oh, know, uh, emotional yeah. like full moon. That's a whole nother. Hungry like the she-wolf, man. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's just kind of like in a full moon a couple of days before your period and you're just like, I'm just ending up in all the wrong beds. Like, (laughs) Mm -hmm. just go out. Oh, my God. It's just like, hmm, who's got the right porridge here? I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) This one's too hot and this one's too cold. And this one is good (laughs) for a snowstorm. Like... (laughs) (laughs) It's cuffing season, y'all. I mean, it's cuffing season. I don't know. Damn, I didn't oh, get snowstorm sex. Mm. You guys, any of you got like a cuffing uh, partner right now? You got like someone mm. who's uh No. You know? My regular's been wanting no? to cuddle a lot lately. 
Like normally we would just like have sex and I would leave, but now he wants to like lay down and talk. Uh, well, that's not bad. It's but not bad. you guys have been like, you know. Yeah, we've been fucking for a, for a for while, a, for, a, for a few months now. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I I think that's like a progression. Right. Yeah. Oh man. No, you, I do just you share a seamless account yet or. See no. See that's the whole fucked up part <laughs> about Grinder is that like it's not that serious, right? <laughs> <laughs> because oh God, they're not even Grindr. sharing Netflix right, accounts. Right, he's like two blocks away, so like oh, there's shit. no point for me to be there if we're not having sex, because I could just be home. Uh, yeah, but like you guys could like hang out together. I don't know. I feel like that crosses a line. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Like, it's like we just service each other, and <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that's and then it. We sit down and talk about you know our days or whatever, and then and then I get dressed and I go home. Well, I feel like if you're talking yeah. about each other's days, then you might as well just hang out. Right? Oh no, uh? we'll, we'll see what happens. Wait, it's okay. We don't have to name names. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I I I don't have anybody this cuffing season. I I fell into. Bad habits of the spring recently, and <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to pull myself out of that hole. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. all right, that's what uh, that's what fucking Netflix and friends are for, man. It's just like do you do do whatever you do. Yeah. Um, you guys have pretty pretty good holidays though. Do you guys go home at all? I mean, well, I'm yeah. not. Yeah, I'm not from here, so no. I was working. I'm I'm from here, so like yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a slave to the industry. <laughs> <laughs> Q4 was kicking my ass. <laughs> That's my bad part of the industry, man. <laughs> okay. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. So I, I work at a restaurant in Times Square. So it was like the last oh, wow. three weeks have been just like. Double, double, ten hour day. Wow, you survived that, jeez. Yeah, and it's still happening. <laughs> yeah, it's that's a lot. <laughs> it's that is a lot, a lot. Uh, how about you? Did you go home for the holiday? I um, I went back. I uh, well, I went upstate to uh, see my grandpa, and we uh, we kicked it old people style, which was cool. Uh, <laughs> it was really nice. I mean, it's like upstate and Walden is gorgeous. Um, you know, we just watched, uh, we watched old movies. We were like watching The Princess Bride and quoting it back and forth. And, uh, you know, the, the snow was falling, uh, New Year's Eve. So it was pretty quaint and chill. It was good. Um, so it was cool. And I also went, uh, my, uh, my uncle and aunt, they live in, a they live in some gated community. It's like Cortland Manor or some shit. The third, I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was. I mean, that was cool because uh, you know, me and my boyfriend, uh, CW. We, you know, we're we're kind of breaking into the biz. We're newcomers, and uh, you know, that whole side of my family, they're all like, you know, they're producers, agents, uh, you know. Uh, spiritual mentors and all sorts of different fun things. Um, there's this guy there that was talking, he's just like, oh yeah, you know, I don't like, back in the, it was like 50s or something, uh, I parted with a young Marilyn Monroe and she was still Norma Jean and I remember marching in Washington in 62 and watching MLK speak and I was like, dude, that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was cool. Um, my uncle, he's actually, he gets to, uh, report on the Olympics in February. Oh, nice. And, uh, yeah, he just won an Emmy. Like, it was crazy. Like, uh, CW's just like, oh man, like, he's like, can I touch his Emmy? And I was like, well, maybe don't lead with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> it was like hilarious like my six-year-old nephew uh jackson like they were building legos in the kitchen when i wasn't around and uh he was kind of struggling with this transformer and uh, uh jackson just looks at him like dead ass just right in the eyes and he's just like you nervous sweating <laughs> 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 like, the legos but he's just like no <laughs> i'm fine 
<laughs> that that's sounds so like a like l- scene from Get Out. No offense. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> You know what's hilarious is that like his friend was just like he's like yo don't get outed man fucking get out. <laughs> <laughs> he's like don't go don't go to the sunken place I'm just like oh god no they're all nice I swear <laughs> 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 so, they really like they really dug him a lot and uh, he was like working on this piece for uh, for JF about JFK for Newsweek so he was like. He was, like, having this grand old rapport with the older guy who, like, you know, was around for JFK and, like, knew him and, like, all this cool stuff. So it was, like, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty nice. I mean, it was really good food. And, I mean, we were just, like, ripping on Trump the whole time. Like, that was the nice thing is that this holiday season, I, um, I chose to surround myself with, um... (laughs) My, uh, the more liberal uh, side of my family, you know, not the right. ones who's like drunken rambling suddenly became like the voice of a generation. Right. So, that was um, a lot nicer. I know um, some of my friends uh, don't have the, you know, there's always that like awkward uh, moment at the dinner table where it's just like, oh, well, I think he's doing it. It's just like, oh, God, no. <laughs> So like as long as Don't we say like stray from that topic, we'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, because like I don't like, know how that like works at like family function. Like you know, like I, 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 I come from a black family, and so like <laughs> no one in my family voted for Trump. So yeah. like I don't even know what it looks like or how it would feel like to be like a left leaning person or a liberal person having to go home for the holidays and like having like uncle Ted like start like being like all like pro Trump and Bannon. Like, I don't, I don't even know what that, that would feel like, like, you know what I mean? So like, that's like something that I think is, I mean, quasi interesting, but like, just kind of like, well, how do you even handle that? Like, or do you like, like, dig in and say like you, you're wrong and you're ignorant and this is why or are you are you just like well uncle ted is old he's gonna die soon like let me just let him live his life like how does that happen i mean when i had to deal with that uh last christmas i mean i just i was like mm, i mean we were um we were at this uh we we're at this restaurant in uh michigan and they were just like kind of going into it and I was just like, I was just like, well, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm from like, you know, liberal fucking island. So I mean, I don't really agree with anything you're saying. And it's just like, you know, let's let's just change the topic. And the fucking the waiter comes over and he's just like, oh, so like, you know, what would you like to eat? And I was just like, well, pussy. <laughs> 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 Oh, Jesus. And, like, you know, every, and it's sort of, like, you know, the thing about, like, being a comic, like, in these sort of times, it's like, all right, well, if I can make light of a fucking awkward, weird situation, then I will. And it's like, you know, my brother is, you know, he's, he doesn't really agree with a lot of, like, you know, some of the, the conservative Republicans on, like, you know, like, kind of how my dad is and shit. And it's like, you know, he means well, but it's like, yeah, you know that this entire administration basically hates me and all my friends? Like, you realize that, right? Right. <laughs> it's like, cool. <laughs> but, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, it's like you realize when you're in New York City, you are in this sort of liberal bubble, and you don't really see much of, you know, what's going on. I mean... Now that we are all so connected via media and all this stuff, we're, like, you know, hyper violently aware of, you know, the kind of divisive nature of, you know, just the stuff. And just, like, the pure nonsense. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw, um, he was basically taking credit for, like, zero deaths on airplanes. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, because... (laughs) He is the reason that nobody died in a plane. Like he's just such a insane megalomaniac. It's 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 beyond f- being even remotely fathomable at this point that like it's it's kind of like like I feel like if a bird like fell out of a tree and didn't break its wing, he would take credit for it. 
it was just like, I oh, know, right? that bird was floating on my words all the way down to the <laughs> ground, and that's why I didn't break its <laughs> wing. Melania, <laughs> suck my dick. <laughs> like, she, no, she doesn't do that. Oh, God, <laughs> She's got help Lord, for that. Jesus right. <laughs> um, so Somebody now, get her out of there, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our first, our alleged first sex worker. Yes. Um, oh, my God. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, just, I miss every Michelle I every day. I Obamas. I just, like, fucking, my heart sinks, and I just start weeping. I'm like, oh, yeah. No. <laughs> we had it so good for eight years. <laughs> Why? Like, I feel bad uh, for, like, like, kids that, like, only remember the Obamas like their entire life and and they're just like now they're we've got like Trump and they must think like the world is ending and we all fucked up like you know it was just like I oh feel we, like we all felt like the world was ending last well, November 8th like yeah but like I went through Reagan and I went through like both bushes so I kind of feel like there have been multiple times where I felt like the world was ending yeah that's true that's so true. like now I, yeah I remember yeah. specifically Ooh. when uh the second bush was, yeah. in, was in office and it was like oh, oh fuck. the world is ending the world is ending and like we're fucked yeah mm -hmm. so like i i kind of feel like i've been through that like i feel like the world is ending business before except that like trump makes bush seem competent which is so scary whoa right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean it's like it's so on scary. pretzels and like you know paints dogs in bathtubs is like oh what a good boy yeah exactly <laughs> I feel Get like they're treat. both they're he both needs equally a stupid, slim gym but like I feel like Bush wasn't trying to make the world come to an end he just was you know dumb enough to make the world come enough. to an end you like just dumb but like I feel like this guy is just like trying he's, he's just mean like, and hateful like oof. He's insane. I don't even know. And, like, I just, like, I don't know. It's just, like, sometimes I wake up and I'm just, like, is this an Onion article or not? Like, I can't. <laughs> I can't even. I can't tell the difference between satire and reality anymore. Like, that. I'm just, like, am I having, am I dissociating right now? Like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I wish it was an Onion oh article. My, we could just like end oh it with man, the end and just like close it's like down. Like I read the, the news, it's just like when the edibles hit. Like I don't even know anymore. It's fucking so crazy. Now, Sarah, you identify as being uh, non-binary. Non-binary, yes. So, now, what exactly is non-binary? I just, I mean, I don't. I don't see myself as male or female or I just, I kind of, you know, I'm just, I'm gender queer. I like men, women, trans, intersex, it, you know, I like, I love everyone and I don't really, you know, I don't call myself a woman or a man. I mean, I'm just, I'm just me. I'm, I'm Sarah Jane Dillon. I like what I like. I am who I am. What up? <laughs> just kind of like, I don't know. I just, it's like I've had these moments where I, it's just like, you know, whenever, I don't know. I just feel like there's always these uh, sort of limitations and like, oh, so I mean, but I mean, you're feminine, but like, you know, you're, you're masculine and this, or you're that, or I don't know. I'm just like, I just feel like just not identifying as either is just, it's, if it, I just feel better personally. And I mean, I'm also the type of person who, I mean, I'm just like, you know, I, you know, you can call me Sarah, you can you know, call me girl and call me dude, you call me, you know, what, whatever, you know, I, I'm cool with whatever as long as, you know, you're treating me with respect, we have a good time, it's like, you know, we can hang kind of deal, I just, you know, there's just, I feel like, so now, you know, there's so much, uh, what's up? Do you feel that, uh, because you identify as being non-binary that there is uh some limitations to your free speech 
Ooh. <laughs> I set shit up well. Uh, so, Go on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, oof. so that's a good one because I don't know if you saw that whole, uh, you know, Facebook banning fiasco. Oh, uh, um, yeah. So, like, now for people that, that don't know uh, the context of it, because we've talked about it, but, like, you know, like, people might forget or not necessarily know. So, uh, there have been a lot of women that have been banned or people that identify as women or some non-binary people that Gender, uh queer, people of color any of that yeah right that um so basically non-white males were banned mm. on facebook uh for saying that all men are scum mm -hmm. and yeah basically yeah it's like uh if you basically if you were anything but a straight white man, you were being banned for... So what happened was that, so Ray uh, Sonny and um, uh, Marsha Belsky, who, they do the uh, Misandry podcast, which if you haven't listened to it, is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Uh, but basically, I mean, uh, you know, they kind of rip on men in a tongue-in-cheeky uh, sort of tone. And uh, basically, they started getting all of these dudes, like, harassing them, sending them DMs saying they're going to, you know, stalk them, find them at work, murder them, rape them, like, all this, like, really horrible like, you know, they're threatening their their livelihood and their safety. And I mean, they're saying these really awful things to these women. And uh, so what they started to do was, you know, they started taking screenshots of who these dudes were and reporting their, you know, their, like, in all, like, in all fairness, their harassment and horrible shit they've been saying they um, reported it, like, to Facebook to be like, hey, this violates community standards. Like, you are attacking me based on my race and my gender and this and that and the other thing. Because it's like, you know, they were calling them all sorts of horrible things. And uh, whenever they would um, uh, report that, it would say, like, oh, you know, I mean, we see what you're saying, but it doesn't violate community standards. It's like, oh, some dude threatening my life and like well, threatening you know, to rape me, but me that doesn't violate community standards. That's saying crazy, and scum. it's just like, yes. yeah. And then all of these women who were calling these dudes out and had, using the hashtag "men are scum" were getting banned from Facebook for a day, for a week, for a month. I mean. It was insane. Like, it was just like, oh, so I deal with harassment on the daily, not just online, on the streets, like, fucking in a coffee shop. It's like, I feel like if, if a straight white man had to be a woman for one day, he would lose his fucking shit. He would not be able to handle it. He couldn't even handle, like, fragile masculinity is at the point where you can't even handle, like, yeah, like, the hashtag men are scum. They started starting this whole other hashtag being, like, the war on men. It's just like, oh, God forbid you can't even talk to a woman anymore or it's rape. It's just like, oh, my God, like, get the fuck over it, dude. Ugh, it's just, ugh, I don't know. And it's like, for me, it's like, like, rape culture sounds like a shitty boy band anyway. Sure. <laughs> it's like, ugh, like, It's the culturalist it's club. Just, <laughs> 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 like for real and it's like it's like dude if you i mean how would you feel if like you were at work and it's like you know someone was making you really uncomfortable and like you know you couldn't even say anything about it for fear of losing your job and your security and your benefits like that sucks and it's like you know all these women in hollywood who like you know quit certain professions because men couldn't keep their fucking dick in their pants it's like dude it's not that hard like Fucking porn hub it up and do your thing. Like, it's just like, don't make it my problem, bro. It's like, come on. <laughs> ah, I don't know. It's just frustrating that, like, you know, Did it's you like get Mark Zuckerberg just like, oh, this doesn't but like, eh, war on men. It's just like, well, that whole movie, Social Network, was just about how, like, he started this whole network because of his ex girlfriend didn't want to fuck him anymore. So, like, color me shocked. 
fuck you, fucking Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, fuck, uh, so now, did you get swept up in this band? Did you get anyway. swept up in the band? Like, did you get banned from Facebook? I um, I got banned for a day, and I had a few of my posts removed. So I didn't get these like thirty-day bans like some people did. I know uh, you guys know Elsa Waith, right? Yeah, we, we had, had her on, on a couple of weeks ago. And she, but when oh she was still in Facebook jail, I mm-hmm. love her so much. Um, yeah, I mean she got banned for like thirty days. Or, like I don't know. But um, she's like, actually Kathy been Hume, banned for like three months in twenty seventeen. Whoa, for real? Yeah, she was like. She was she, every time she gets banned, she gets banned for a month. So in 2017, she was banned for three months in total. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> it's Elsa. It's Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> we Yo, all know Elsa. It was great though because like there was this dude who was um, he was harassing me on Facebook um, based on he was friends with my emotionally, verbally uh, gaslighty fucking piece of shit ex so he started you know just sending me all these messages about like you know how how much of a you know piece of shit that i was but you know he was he thought that we were friends and this and that and that you know like the laundry list of reasons of why i was like a garbage person and i was like oh word like thanks for the reminder of why i don't fuck with y'all anymore thank you and then like elsa commented on like Cause he just kept going like all over my Facebook and he's like, I won't bother you with another email or comment or notification ever again. Bye. And then she like left a comment below just like quoting him. Like, I won't bother you with another email or notification other again with like that, like, uh, you know, like that confused kind of emoji. Like it's thinking like, Hmm, I was kind of- <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, she's great. Cause she's just like, like, she does not like, any dudes try to come at her with their like toxic masculinity or their fragile whatever it might be she's just like "Uh uh-uh dude no fucking way i mean you know i've i've done comedy and stuff with elsa she's amazing and you know she's one of those people too who's like she's an activist as well as you know like she she does this thing gold comedy with like you know like teaching these like you know strong smart awesome like younger girls like how to break into the comedy scene and find their voice and I'm like you know she's badass like of course she's gonna advocate for someone who's getting ripped on by like these people that even when they saw what my ex was putting me through didn't say shit so it's like we gotta advocate for ourselves and like as women in this thing it's like you know solidarity like stick together so I always like I was like yo like I really do appreciate that she's fucking awesome so no also (laughs) it's awesome and like So now I had like several little tests going on uh, with the whole uh, men are scum business. And so Mm -hmm. my first test was I said that the um, community standards review board of Facebook were all scum. And so I wanted (laughs) to see if that would get me banned. And it didn't. And so then my next test, um, and I did it live on the show, was that I said, I think men are all scum. And that also didn't get me banned. Interesting. So I think that it was the, the fact that saying think instead of all, like I said, I think all men instead of just saying all men because it's... Um, more questioning than uh, affirmative, uh, that huh. didn't get banned. So, like, throughout all of these things, like, I, I'm, I think words matter and words are important. And I think that we need to say the words that we want to say, but we also need to say them in a manner of which we don't get blocked so that we can keep saying our words. Mm -hmm. So like I'm like any time I see like in mass people getting blocked for something, I'm always trying to test how can you say the same thing without getting blocked? 
Like, how do you get under the censors? Have you ever been blocked from Facebook? I have been blocked from Facebook. What did you say then? Um, I think it was like something like Trump related. Oh. I, I think oh, it was you might tr- have been reported by some dickhead, probably. Yeah, I think it was like something Ooh. Trump related, but I did get blocked, and I've had, um, I've definitely had like uh, my statuses taken down before, but uh, I don't know. Like I I think each question mark. <laughs> yeah, it's so I think it's it's all a matter of how you say it but like definitely whenever i see like a trend of people getting blocked or whatever like i'm all about trying to figure out how can you say the same thing without getting blocked Mm. because like they're they're basically running on an algorithm so like if you beat Mm -hmm. the algorithm you stay on you know what i mean it's not like real people are reading this this is just like a computer reading it and then like if you like you know if they say like find like anything that says all men are scum but then there's like no like but then they could have an algorithm that says all men are scum like wild card before wild card after and like you just need Mm -hmm. to beat the computers that's that's like that's my my two cents on it beat the computers they're not smarter than us yet. Beat the computers. <laughs> it's like, this is oh, not... Man, this is like a... Yeah, we're like not living a, in Terminator like a, yet. We can still beat these fuckers. like an Orwellian, like, hero. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, ex- like, all we need to do is, like, uh, you know, Jedi mind trick the algorithm. Mmm, yes. The force is strong with this one. The force I did not is... see... Huh? The force is strong. The force is strong. Did you guys see the new Star Wars? Or No, I haven't seen it yet. Did you see it? No. I'm not I like that. I haven't. A... I've, I've heard a mixed bag. and you, it's Especially with like people who are really huge fans of it since the get-go were kind of disappointed. So I'm just like, eh, I don't know if I want to spend money on that. Like I wouldn't spend money on seeing Bright, which was fucking garbage. You guys watch that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was like Max Landis's new thing that was terrible. Wait, who who's in Bright? Uh, it's so it is a oh God. Just I, I love how this was the pitch, and Hollywood was just like fuck yeah. So it's basically like. Like a rookie, tone deaf, buddy cop orc film starring Will Smith. But wait, there's more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking. So my boyfriend says he's just. He was basically like, oh yeah, you know. He's just like. He's just like bright. Like uh, uh <laughs> what if we did Lord of the Rings, but it was tone deaf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Awful. So, like, I mean, there is, like, there is these quote like, me and my friends just kind of watched it, like, Mystery Science Theater style, and just, like, roasted it forever. Right. And, um, which is always fun. I mean, I love just watching trash movies and just, like, you know, just going off. Um, but, like, oh, my God, there's, like, one of the, f- like, opening scenes was, like, like Will Smith like like swatting this like little like imp thing like flying imp thing just being like fairy lives don't matter and I was like oh my god like why is this happening I was just like oh Jesus this is so bad and like there's this part where they're, they're like in a shootout or whatever and Will Smith is just like they were like in a fucking strip club somewhere and he's just like fuck it I want to die and he's like Fuck it, I guess I'm gonna titty bar gunfight die. And I was like, who fucking wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't like, want a titty gunfight die? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what? Like, how many times are you gonna use die? Like, and I mean, it was like, apparently it was like the director of like Suicide Squad. 
And it's just like, if you weren't already on the edge of, like, anything but your seat, like, it was just <laughs> fucking, ugh, so bad. So bad. I mean, it's, uh, I don't even know. Like, it was just, the writing was so bad, and it was just like, ugh, it was like if fucking Michael Bay fucked, like, the men in black and like that was like the aborted fetus of the fucking like that's what it was like <laughs> the fucking, <laughs> fucking like alien fairy like elves are the one percent uh orcs are systematically oppressed and fucking will smith is just like yeah i guess sure. i guess right. we'll do this <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> I feel like he just does <laughs> anything, like, as long as the check is big enough. Oh, kind yeah. Of. What was like, that? I feel like he just does, like, whatever movie as long as the check is big enough. That's true. I because, mean, like, his last, like, like few Landis movies have all been kind of like, uh, Like, he hasn't done anything, like, Oscar-worthy in, like, ten years. No. And Yeah, um, and I was like... Then he did ugh. that one superhero movie was where his weakness was, like, the white woman. What was that? Oh, I don't remember oh God. that shit. Uh, oh, God. Fuck, I can't think of the name. Was it uh, his? Jade is no, going to beat your Eva ass. <laughs> 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 no, I think it was something with an H. Never mind, she rules. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like, oh, yeah, he was like a superhero, but like his weakness was Charlize Theron. She was like his kryptonite. Was, I don't know. He was I a superhero? Yeah. I don't remember that one. Oh man, what was it? Wasn't he in like Blue Streak or something? Remember that god awful thing? Uh, he's been in like a. I mean, I don't think he will ever repent enough for Wild West. Hey, oh, hey, god. that was a good movie. Like, <laughs> oh my god, you're like, hey, hey, listen, listen. It <laughs> might like, have had a good sound. No, no, no. Oh god, no. <laughs> Going yeah. straight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it had a good soundtrack. It was a crap movie. Everybody knows it's a crap oh movie. Oh my god. Oh, um, but we're gonna have to like wrap it up before we take a break oh, for our next segment. But like before we go, uh Sarah, like where can everyone see you next? What projects are you working on? Where can they follow you on social media? Cool, all right. Um, so, some upcoming shows I got. Um, I'm at uh, Broadway Comedy Club uh, January 19th at uh, 10 p.m. Uh, there's, uh, if you message me on Facebook, uh, Sarah Jane Dillon, or you know, you can find me there. Uh, the first four to message me get discounted tickets, so hit me up. Um, I have, uh, on January 30th, I have a show at the Footlight, which is, um, it's a Mark Miller show. He does, uh, basically we do comedy and then we play old, uh, uh, comedy vinyls and stuff and we have a panel discussion and that one's totally free. Uh, we, I also have, um, I have Gotham Comedy Club on, uh, February 5th, 2018 at 9.30 p.m. Um, uh, because I passed my audition, woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, I also have the show that I'm co-producing with, uh, C.W. Headley, that's Laugh Tracks. Uh, that is also at the Footlight Bar, which is, uh, February 12th. 2018 and that's seven to nine i'm super pumped because we have a uh, khalid rahman on there who's just on conan and he is amazing um so yeah it's going to be like a music and comedy kind of variety deal and that's also free so um yeah you can check me out sarah jane dylan on facebook uh, my twitter is uh dylan sar like dinosaur like d-i-l-l-o-n-s-a-u-r um, and my Instagram is, um, it's Ellen underscore Cherry underscore Charles. <laughs> all right. So that is all, that's the that's all, folks. <laughs> uh, yeah, awesome. thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. Yeah, no, thanks for doing it. And, uh, good luck getting where you're going tonight. I know it's, like, kind of, like, treacherous out. It's a little 
little, little slip around. I'll just do the old, the old penguin waddle off to my, <laughs> to my next gig. So, <laughs> thoughts and prayers, guys. Thoughts and prayers. <laughs> you've got all my thoughts. I don't pray, but you've got the thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> you got. I'll be in. You'll be in my thoughts. Awesome. Thoughts. You got all thoughts right, well, and good wishes. All right. All right. And I'll then, see you guys uh, later. Uh, and Rodney, how about you? Oh, uh, I'm doing uh, Fashion Be Funny. I'm going to be hosting next Friday night at Broadway Comedy Club, 9.30 p.m. You are. Yeah. Uh, I am going to be at Merriment and Mortification tomorrow night at Auto Shrunken Head and Fashionably Funny at Broadway Comedy Club next Friday on January the 12th. This is Big Talk and Brewskies. Follow the show on Twitter at Big Talk and Brew. Follow me on Twitter at Marissa Smith, and we will be right back. You know what I want? You know what I want? That's it for the Shout out to say she don't fight me. I'm honey. Rest in peace, Bill C. I see you, bud. Money. Let's get here. Money. Money, baby. Money. Take it out. Hold on. She got to take it out. Drop it low. Drop it low. She the truth, gonna and bust it open, let me see what it do Bad yellow bone, chasing money, f*** the fame I f*** with your campaign Diamonds in my chain, we gripping money, we gripping grain Throwing hundreds, we make it rain Round of applause, gonna do your damn thing Gotta take it off, drop it low, drop it low Yeah.
Yeah, big talking brewskis. Marissa Smith is who you see. What a cooler combo in here. Crack a cold one, we're on the air. Big talking brewskis. Marissa Smith is who you see. What a cooler combo in here. Crack a cold one, we're on the air. Kicking back, having a few beers, we're chatting. Pull up your chair, we're all relaxing. Any subject, we never dismiss. Big talking brewskis with Marissa Smith. Comedy, sex, relationships, war. Any subject, we got it in store. Big talking brewskis is coming in live. Crack when open, Marissa has arrived. Hey guys, Big Brewskis welcome with Marissa back. Smith. This is Big Talking Brewskis. I'm Marissa Smith. I still have Rodney Daniels with me. What's up, guys? Happy Friday. It's Big Talking Brewskis segment two. And I've got Anita Flores with me. Hi. Hello. I'm alive. It's cold out. It's freezing. Yes, it out. is. It's freezing. Winter is here with a vengeance. Yeah. I, I don't know oh, if it bothers oh, me more. Because I always... <laughs> I always associate um, people like my grandparents' age complaining about weather, and I feel like it's all I do mm-hmm. now. Right. I just well, that's like about how cold it is. Well, because New York, it's a it's a thing, you know. Yes. Like when I lived in LA, it was like eighty five degrees every day, and when I moved here, it was like now nah, I check the weather every single day, just right. like because you need to know. I don't have. If everybody doesn't know, like we just had a snowstorm yesterday. Yes. Some places got like ten inches. Yeah. Like no, I, I feel. Um, ungrateful for uh even complaining but there is a crack in my bathroom window okay oh and i have great heat in my apartment i'm so grateful for it but there's a crack in my bathroom window and so when i go to the bathroom it's like sitting on a block of ice oh Oh, it's anyway if that's my biggest problem i got it made (laughs) it's fine but that's like got to be like the worst when you're getting out of the shower and oh. like, and it's like are the pee in the middle of the night? Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. Pee in the middle of the night is the worst. Because yeah. then it's just like you were halfway asleep and now it's like now you're awake, motherfucker. You're, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just have to treat it like diving into a cold pool, or yeah. like I'm at the beach. I just gotta like sit my butt down, or yes, wait till I take a shower and then it's warmed up. Yeah. Or yeah. I should just ask my landlord to fix the crack. Yeah, yeah, I am not paying too. rent to you, Pixis Crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, that's also another option. Yeah, right. <laughs> totally, you know. totally an option. Yeah. So, uh, Anita, how was your week? Uh, my week was good, uh, except I feel like I got what I would call a mini flu. I've never had the flu. Okay. Um, and so. You've never had the flu? I don't think I've ever had the flu because everyone tells me the flu is awful. Mm-hmm. Right? You know exactly what it's happening. It's terrible. Everything's coming out of all ends. And I've never had the flu shot. And I have a crazy theory that if I get the flu shot, I will get the flu. You probably will. Yeah, that's my fear. Oh. Um, and I don't s- get the flu shot either. And I've really? had the flu, but I don't get Yeah, the flu. I've had the flu too, but I've, I don't ever get the flu shot. Yeah. I just, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah. why would you give yourself yes. the virus? Exactly. Like, well, it's supposed to prevent you from getting the virus. My problem with the flu shot is that it's only like 20 to 30 percent effective because when they're coming out with the vaccine, they don't know what strain of flu is out that year. So like most of the time they're giving you a strain of flu that you're not actually going to get. Because oh. it's only, so like, they're giving you so you go in and prepare for last year's flu. Right. So it's like there's only like 20 or 30 percent chance that the strain of flu that they're giving you is the actual strain of flu that you're going to get. So that's why I don't get it is because it makes no sense because they really have no idea what strain of flu is going to be the predominant strain of flu. Like they do projections that like, oh, well, at the rate of last year's strain of flu, this should be the strain of flu for next year. But that doesn't mean that that's the strain of flu you're going to get. Because like, you don't like you could be in the fucking IHOP, be around a bunch of Indonesians that have a completely different strain of flu than we have in New York. Why are you going to say Indonesians? Because it was just something that I felt was not a fun example. Like, yeah. Yeah. An example no. And I, I felt extra bad about not getting it because there's a rule. At least I was, I was supposed to do volunteer work last week with a friend of mine who likes to do sing-alongs at a senior citizen home. And it's very sweet. And I, and I go. But at this time of the year, if you're ar- if you're to be around um, the, the the people that live there, they're all you know sixty five oh. and over. Mm-hmm. You must get a flu shot, 
And now that you say that, it's like, but I'm just giving myself the flu. So anyway, I couldn't do it. I was like, I had to message her and be like, I can't get the flu shot. I'm too scared. I'm not going to be able to come. Um, but yeah, because apparently if you're older and you get the flu, it can turn into pneumonia. Anyway, yeah, kill you. I don't think I got the flu. I think I had a mini cold that I got three days ago. Um, I took some NyQuil. And I don't like taking NyQuil because I don't know about you guys, but it gives me nightmares. When I saw that on the, I was like, oh my God, I'm not the only person. It's totally like, not you. Like, They're elaborate. I, yes. It's real elaborate. Like you're falling. Yes. I see all of my fucking family members. Oh, it's We're awful. all in one place or driving in a car somewhere. Like what the fuck? Like <laughs> It's not a restful sleep. No, it's not. And then you're like drowsy the whole day afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's not great. I know people use it to like get high, I guess. But I wouldn't call it a fun high. That, that's robo I feel oh, like. Oh, oops. I'm getting all the cough medicines mixed up. Because they used to robo buzz in college. Oh, those robo tripping. Yeah. Robo tripping. Yeah. So, like, I used to robo buzz yeah. in college. How oh, do you robo buzz? Do tell. Yeah. I've, like, I mean, I've only done it like two or three times, but, like, basically, you just drink the entire bottle of robo <laughs> Oh my God. And then, like, you're very clear for a very long time after. Like, I did not have sinus problems for, like, <laughs> weeks. Um, but, uh, so, like, I I think that it's, like, kind of, like, a combination of, like, visuals and, like, um, I remember, like, I when I did it in college, uh, my friends and I, like we all did it together it's maybe like five of us but like there was like someone had a lip gloss that was like i think like a cherry or vanilla flavored lip gloss but if you put that lip gloss on and you smoked a marlboro light it tasted like a donut and so like Sign that me up. <laughs> like so like that whole night we were just like oh can i have a donut and that literally meant i want lip gloss and a cigarette and like people are looking at us like, what do you mean you guys got donuts? And they're like, yeah. And like we're just like 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 handing each other like, lip gloss and like cigarettes, and we're just like, yeah, it tastes like a, like. What? Uh, yeah. So, um, how long does it last for? A couple hours. It doesn't make you go to sleep. No, I mean I I didn't uh, go to sleep. Like if yeah. anything, I was like up all night. But uh, it's like I that was like a thing in like freshman year. But like. Oh, uh, freshmen. You know, freshmen, you'll try anything. But, like, <laughs> basically, that's what led me to not do drugs was robo buzzing. Because, like, so I, I did it once and I lost everybody and I was by myself. And so um, I was looking outside the window and I was, I was up in New Hampshire. So, like, the whole uh, path was, like, covered in frost and it looked like. Uh, really shiny copper pennies because the way that the the light on the path was hitting the frost looked like pennies and so like i followed the pennies all the way to a dorm and there was like one light on in the whole dorm so i went to that room and luckily it was my friend's room because i don't know whose room i would have been going to but i just was just like oh the light's on there that's where i'm supposed to go so like i just went there and they're just like, oh, Mass, you're all right. And I'm like, yeah, I just need to go inside. And so they're just like, okay, come in. And so then they had a poster on their wall that was like an Alice in Wonderland poster. And so it was like the caterpillar, like smoking a hookah, like sitting on a mushroom. And so like I go and I trace the smoke out of the hookah and I'm trying to find the path of like all of this maze of smoke and every single path leads back to the pipe. And literally right there, I was just like, oh, I can't do drugs. And they're like, why? I'm like, drugs lead to more drugs. Look, there's there's no way out of this. And, <laughs> so, <laughs> wow. and like, that was like the last time I ever did anything. <laughs> like, wow. I thought that was going to go to a much darker place. It yeah. was just yeah, a no, poster. Just, yeah. Some Robitussin. Yeah. And that was that was it. That was it. I mean, I. And I, I always try to get her to smoke weed. And that's. <laughs> no. She does. And she won't. Yeah, because of this whole Robitussin. I mean, yeah. I you know I'm not a. Um, I would say there's definitely. I don't, yes, I don't. I don't generally do hard drugs. Like I've never done cocaine. Uh, yeah, I've never done um, that either. I don't like 
the idea of things going up your nose that's that's me personally i feel like if drugs were things i could take in food form like if there were cupcakes i could put cocaine on them like that might be a different story yeah but it's just uh. or but yeah i'm not i think I'm you just invented it. something right. perhaps cocaine <laughs> cupcakes i mean it, it sounds cute um but, <laughs> but uh I it's gotta be the little off, ones, right? like when the I little w- cupcakes by Melissa's with a little coke. Oh, though yeah, that would be adorable. Yeah, <laughs> cupcakes by Melissa. You could do that in New York. Can you imagine? <laughs> I mean, maybe at a yeah. club. Not oh, that yeah. I go to clubs really, but what I was gonna say is, like, I never had that moment really. But I, one of a, a friend that I grew up with, um, she was like, like, a, like watching an after school special. Like she smoked pot, and then she ended up dating her drug dealer. And then her drug dealer convinced her to start um, becoming a dealer herself. And then she had to drop out of school because her parents made them break up and she had to move upstate. So that's what happens when you smoke pot. That's what you got to move upstate. You got to move upstate because your drug dealer will seduce you. That yeah. is not true. I know. Yeah. I know it's not true. Well, just, of course not. Uh, 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 I love I feel weed. Like that's that's just how like, you get free I drugs. I love weed. I smoke weed every day and I'm a great member of society. Of course. But if it was such a weird thing to see at such a young age like something that w- that's so unlikely and never happens to anyone well right well yeah so when odd. you're young you are like definitely like kind of like have this like stigmatism like about the whole situation absolutely first time i smoked weed i was like 16 it was just like you want to skip school and smoke weed you know it's like what i don't do that no like- what, what kills me are there so many people i know really really smart people that smoke a lot of weed and like are just smart and like still do things while they're high. Like if I smoke a bunch of weed, I'm not gonna like write a novel. I'm gonna watch Planet Earth 2, which I did okay. last night. <laughs> I recommend it, it's on Netflix. Okay. Um, I smoke, smoke some weed and watch Planet Earth 2. But I'm not the kind of person who would write like write a screenplay while smoking pot do you have do you is well, there see, anyone, yeah, yeah that's the whole thing if like yeah. well because i could do both like yeah. if, I, if i smoke weed like i smoke weed every day like in the morning like i mm-hmm. have to have weed and coffee and if i'm going to work then like i'll go to work and i'll be able to be like hey guys how many is rodney and be taking care of you and, but if i'm at home then like i get caught up in investig- investigation discovery yes yes and i like murder mysteries like oh, I, I, love I like oh my like, god i just i'm obsessed with that channel like i could just watch it all day i'm watching mine hunters I know Ooh. I keep going back to Netflix, but apparently I don't go outside in this weather. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of TV. Well, nobody does. I right? Said, Dude, this guy wanted to eat my ass yesterday, and I was just <laughs> like, It's too it's cold. It's too cold, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not walking the four blocks to your house. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy wanted me to come to Manhattan yesterday. I'm like, I'm in Westchester. Like, that's not. Oh my! No, no, no. no. (laughs) Yeah, I've gotten some insane requests for travel um, from dudes like on dating apps. Like, I like I I was texting with a guy from Bumble. I would say my least favorite dating app. If we're reviewing dating apps, oh yeah, Um, there's there's a lot of. It, from what I've seen on Bumble, it's a lot of like, if you've ever seen the movie American Psycho, mm-hmm. that's what all the guys look like. Just like very preppy, like Patagonia vests mm-hmm. might choke you without asking. Um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> Do they ever ask? I feel like they just choke you. Like, Somebody asked me. I wish a motherfucker would. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just start choking me without asking. Like, wait a minute. No, I, think it's, I think it's nice to ask. Yeah, that's no, just should, me. Should they, they should ask, but I feel like they don't ask. Somebody beat I, on me once without asking oh no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> that is not okay no. no you yeah we were in the shower and then he just like started peeing on my leg and i was like what are you doing he's like you're not into that and i'm like no, no. Uh, like I, I mean uh-uh. i was i was told by a friend he went clubbing um in germany in berlin he said that there are some really unbelievable gay clubs specifically in berlin and he went to one where people were peeing on each other but they did ask I, mean, well, I feel yeah, like you, you had to ask that. Yeah. I mean, like, well, right. Choking, like, I feel like ping, if you go pulling, into a room and, like, asking. everybody's peeing on each other, like, you're, you're walking into that room, you know what's going to happen. But in the shower, was it a sneak pee or was he? Yeah, it was a sneak pee. That's like, we we're cool. both, like, in the shower, soaping up, and all of a sudden he started peeing. Like, and you're like, <laughs> oh, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, like he was hot, too. Like, but, <laughs> nah. You didn't get a call out. I think if a hot guy peed on me, it would throw me off guard for a sec. Like, if it were, I always think about what I would stoop to if, like, a celebrity that I have a crush on Ooh. wanted to sleep with me. Okay, so I've been asked, I've been doing, yes. like, a little poll, like, mm-hmm. at work and shit. Mm-hmm. 
So, for fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars, would you let someone shit on your chest? That's not a lot of money. No, it's not <laughs> enough. It's not <laughs> enough money uh, for more money up. Def- but but fifty. For like 000. you gotta lay there and they're just gonna squat and they're just gonna shit. That's not enough money. Not bare for 50K. chest. A hun- not- hundred grand. No, you gotta like. We're talking Half like. A million? I would 500 need, grand that would take that much yeah i would need more than that yeah i would because like for me i need You're it a to be so. i'm a germaphobe <laughs> i'm a pooophobe because like i don't even like my own poo i don't even like pooing myself and oh. but like also it would need to be enough money that i can like change my life to never remember that it happened sure you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, I need to be sitting, mm-hmm. like, in a penthouse on Central Park West, enjoying my view, drinking my coffee, like, like, and... I and feel like you would still have, like, uh, like, dreams about, like, that happening, though. Like, <laughs> like fuck, that happened. Like, <laughs> you'd have a flashback. Yeah, like, there's like, no I, way I you're would. forgetting that. I, I, I would, but, like, I would just that. have to be like, oh, you know something? But look at my apartment. Look at my like, apartment. It was worth it. So, one million dollars? No, Central Park West, you need like $10 million. I, I would need at least 10 Damn. By the someone, way, someone asked me I'd how much. I'd do it for 50 much. just in case y'all ask her. <laughs> <laughs> 50000 50, Yeah, it's just shit. Like, no. I play this game all the time, by the way. Of do what you? What things would I do for what amounts of money? Dude, I've, like, I'm obsessed with it. Like, I'm at work. I was asking like all these like stray guys at work yesterday, like, would you suck a dick for like $50,000? Uh-huh. They gotta, do like, it for like 50 like, bucks. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay, you definitely. Nuts and everything. Then I was like, "Would you take? Would you like stick a dick in your butt for like fifty for a hundred thousand dollars?" And like, surprisingly, they all were like, "Yeah." Yeah, I feel like <laughs> as long as I'm curious if you were talking Shit. to those guys one on one because I feel it. No, it was really? in a group. That's so surprising it was great. to me. It was like in a group. Well, that's refreshing to hear. Yeah. Well, because I, I would think like a bunch straight, of straight men. I don't know. I feel like out. straight guys have like no concept of like people paying for things because i think like straight guys like pay for dates so much yeah, that like that they don't have, like that offer on the table that yeah. it's, it's like something really small it's just like oh they're giving me something where it's like i feel like true. women yeah, they or all like said they would suck a dick for fifty thousand dollars it like, <laughs> like i wouldn't <laughs> suck like an unattractive man stick for fifty thousand dollars like i had to at least be attracted to them like e- like you know what, what? i mean like i no, wouldn't no i'm you're in a hotel room and like this guy i wouldn't dick suck is here. donald trump's dick for fifty thousand dollars oh i don't think i could do it you know what i would take the fifty thousand dollars and i was cut it, i would cut his dick off like right when it was happening. i thought about that yeah I like, like, <laughs> maybe just <laughs> just chomp it off no chomp it off. it's like, not enough money here it's you like, go i'm a real american it's not enough money <laughs> If like, I it's like that's not enough money to even have his naked dick in the room with me. I agree. Oh, yeah. for him it's a different for him, ball that's game. Like you know what I mean? Fifty thousand dollars for him it's like nothing. No, please. I'm trying to think of like, all right, who's super gross? Harvey Weinstein. I was just about to say that. Okay. Exactly. That's a good. Would one. you suck Harvey Weinstein's dick for fifty thousand dollars? I mean, well, I'm not as tight, so you probably <laughs> wouldn't ask me. You but never know. I mean, what? This is true. Uh, Kevin did. Spacey. Uh, no, no. See, that's a moral thing. Yeah, now it's a moral thing. Before all of this came out, I thought he was not bad to look at. Who, before, Kevin Spacey? Before I found out the kind of person that he is. I thought, you know, I thought he was uh, good looking. I had always now, heard, no. I always thought that it was kind of weird that, like, he just didn't come out. Like, I sure. feel like yeah. we live, like, in a society where, like, it's... Now it's acceptable. Like you can come out, you can still have your career. Like it's fine. But like I feel like it's weird for like there to be like closeted like Hollywood superstars. Yeah, what a way to tarnish. Like I don't know. Uh, that was the worst. I, I, I like part of me wonders if that was his plan from the beginning. Like he's like, I'll keep it a secret, and then when somebody finally comes forward and is like, oh, he's a sexual predator, then that's when he goes, I'm gay, and then somehow people will go, okay, no. No. No, didn't work out. Yeah, no. Definitely not. You know what I wonder? Where are all these dudes? Like, obviously, there's been, you know, I I picture, like, Louis C.K., Kevin Spacey, Harvey Weinstein, they're all on an island together. I don't know where, but they're somewhere. 
plotted. Like in some like rehab. Yeah, a really nice rehab. That's yeah, what bothers like me. Like some like sex they have rehab so and Napa. Yeah. And they yeah. have to go and like prune the, the vineyard for, as part of their like rehabilitation and be at one with nature and the vine. And then afterwards, they just drink a shit ton of like wine and talk about like all of the people they've exploited. There you like go. that's just how I see it. Yeah. I've heard rehab is great for celebrities, I mean. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. a spa. Not like real people. But um not like real people. <laughs> no. Not like real people's rehab. Real people's yeah, no, rehab real is people's like, rehab, you're like terrifying. You're in a corner like sweating. This is my yeah. last money question. This oh, is yeah. something I ask yeah, people yeah. a lot. We could do that all day. I love money questions. Yeah. Licking the sidewalk. It wouldn't take much for me to lick the sidewalk, money wise. Oh, I need no I I did at least. Well, it depends. Okay, Which are we talking mean? summer? Oh yeah, that's a good You're question. Right. What this time is, of the year is sidewalk? A, okay, I'm, I'm going. And summer. where is the sidewalk? Summer, New York City. But where? But where in New York, York City? City? Uh, are we talking Gramercy Park? Are we talking Harlem? Are we talking Ooh, like Harlem sidewalk? Like, are we talking <laughs> like uh, is, Times see. Square? Ooh, All right, Times Square, Times Square sidewalk. Times Square sidewalk. Oh, summertime. Oh shit! A thousand dollars? Oh no! To no. lick the sidewalk for how long? Like, it's just one lick. One lick. One lick. I would do, I'd do it. For I would do it for a thousand dollars. Honestly, probably less. <laughs> How long's the lick? <laughs> oh it's no, it's a, a quick it's lick. A, it's like it's one like, lick of a lollipop. Yeah. That's got to be at least three months rent. All right. Well, depending on where you live, five right, grand. Be, yeah. Or wait, a thousand. Oh wait, no. The, yeah, that's, that's yeah. That's, that's like, not like three grand. Three. Right. That's three months. Uh, all right. It's got to be like, like, that's the minimum. And that's like, a, uh, and then I'd probably vomit everywhere. But yeah, yeah it's tough if you're a germaphobe. It's, yeah, it's real hard. I'm, yeah. like right. real. I'm not. So it's Me like, neither, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> no, if no. I catch something, I'm going to die. That's, it was just meant to happen. Yeah. Like. I mean, <laughs> would, what would you say is like the worst place for you to be as a germaphobe? Like a public space that you're like, ugh, get me out of here. Mm. A hospital. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Really? Hospitals just freak me out. In oh, they're. Oh, I, I don't. Yeah, they're like. Well, because I everyone's smell. fucking sick. Everybody's fucking and sick. And I don't know what they There's have. There's dead bodies in the basement. Everybody acts like it's not down there. Like, Is it? Yeah. The more, the more, the morgues in the. I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. well, most morgues are in the basement. In the basement of the hospital. Yeah, like when they when you when you die, they take you down to the morgue, which is in the basement. And so it's just coolers of dead bodies. I'll I'll oh. tell you like. So I, I was with my mom. She had to go to the hospital. She was having like um, chest pains. I went with her. We were in the ER for like hours. And then finally, like she gets into this like like room and the, there's like the curtain dividers and there's a ton of people in there. So like there might be like this is the room that everybody's in before they go upstairs. And so there is a. Uh, this guy that's in the the little divider next to her and so um and somehow like he somehow cut his finger like i don't know if he was like chopping wood or no. like like so like and there's literally like blood like all around his gurney oh and so God. like i'm like and I'm trying because my mom's a bigger germaphobe than me. And I'm trying to, like, distract her from looking at this blood. But meanwhile, I'm, like, talking to her. And all I just see is just, like, blood droplets all around this guy's gurney. And so the doctor comes in and he's just like, oh, um, I need to talk to you. Um, it's kind of serious. And so um, he's just like, why don't you come into my office? And then uh, he's like oh, well, you know, like, you can talk in front of my wife. And so then he's just like, well, I don't know if you want me to have this conversation with you in front of your wife. What? And so then he's just like, um, no, it's my wife. We've been married for 30 years. Like, whatever you can say to me, you can say to my wife. And so then he's just like, are you sure? Like, we should do this in a private place. And he's just like, he's giving him hints. Like, and, and so he's just like, no, it's fine. You know, like, I don't, I'm, I'm a little lightheaded. I don't feel like getting up right now. So then he's just like, um, 
okay, sure, you want to do this here? And he's just like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. He's just like, you're HIV positive. And so then... Oh, my Oh, God. fuck. And, I'm, and, like, my mom turns and looks at me, and we're both like... Ooh! And, like, it's... And so, like, and I'm still looking at, like, all these blood droplets everywhere. I'm just like, oh, thank oh. God this shit is not, like, fucking in the air. Um, <laughs> <and> so, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you shouldn't watch the movie Contagion. Have you ever seen that movie? I no. still have nightmares disease. from Outbreak. I can't. Oh, Outbreak don't see Contagion. Crazy. I've seen no. that one. Do you ever see the commercials where like the people cough and like you could see the cough? Yes. yes. What if you could yes. see the cough? What if you Dude. could see germs? I would never leave yeah. em- anywhere. No. Ugh. Ugh. No, I'd be like literally like be at home trying to figure out how to like mass produce a bubble. Like it's just <laughs> like... <laughs> myself in this it's just like okay i mean everybody needs their own like no you can't come in my bubble like how do you have a bubble that like you can be in and he can be in but then you both can be in together like (laughs) damn his wife found out like that and 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 then she's just like i'm sorry what did you just (laughs) (laughs) say and then we're just like the doctor was trying to give you a hint bruh like (laughs) go to the room it's you say like, you might not want to say this in front of your wife. Oh my god! It was just right. like what you been doing. <laughs> and then, she, he, like the doctor's like, "Well, do you know?" She's like, "Um, yes, yes, I know. Uh, should I be tested too right now? <laughs> like, <laughs> right now? Do you know it is always so scary to get an HIV test? I, I oh think. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, I get yeah. them terrifying right yeah. every single time always yeah. there's always a pause and I don't know why is it to mess with me I don't know um and I even though I know it's it's never it's not gonna be bad it's I still I like hold my breath oh it's yeah. huh, huh. and anyway. yeah yes because you just so. hope that it's not gonna be bad of course <sighs> absolutely she, like she doesn't know last year I got married Oh, congratulations. No, he was HIV oh. positive. He didn't tell me. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Then yeah. I take it back. So like, that was like really scary. Going to like the doctor, like, I don't, like, I don't know. I had sex with this guy. We're married now. Wow. But I'm negative. It's great. Um, thank thank yeah. God. Good. Like, <laughs> thank God. Yeah. And Knock on Congratulations. Right. Right. Great. Right. Like, uh... But that was like the scariest moment ever. Yeah. 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 Man. Well, you're super lucky. No. I don't know if that's is that the highest level. I, I was, I'm always trying to think what because like every month, at least for some women, depending on what whether or not you're on birth control, there's always a moment of like, am I pregnant? And I always wonder, is there there is no equivalent for a man? I no, think, yeah. yeah. See, that's yeah. the whole. Well, that's that's the best part I feel about being gay is that like, I don't ever have that like. Yeah. Is there a baby popping up? Uh huh. Nope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've thought this entire thing. I've, I've, I've had this thought in my head many times where I'm like, uh, like I, I'm not a germaphobe, but I would say I'm You're a worrier. A p- okay. I'm a, I'm a, a hypochondriac. <laughs> I'm a pregophobe. That's yeah. I'm always worried about pregnancy. Pregophobe. And I, I mean, is that a word? Is that a thing? I just made it up. It, I love even it. so, it I sense. like the but word. But that's a thing because I feel like if yeah. I were a woman, I would be scared Absolutely. that I was pregnant every single yeah. month because I love dick. Yeah. Uh, there you go. I mean, <laughs> but now I don't know how yep. your extent of it because I'm also a pregophobe. Mm-hmm. But like, I have to wait periods in between people so that i know if anything bad happens i know which one wow um that's my extent okay no i i wouldn't say i'm i don't know i mean i currently am in a in a monogamous relationship um so that's at least nice because there definitely there have been moments like when i came back i remember i came back from vacation once and i always say like you know there's no rules on vacation where you you know that's where you become i call my that's where i become the reality show version of myself nobody right. knows Ooh, me there just that's skank cute gank it up yeah. um but i remember when i came back from uh columbia um at the time there was high risk of zika wait a minute you uh, went to columbia yeah. and you didn't do any cocaine 
I didn't. No, no. You're cocaine. fucking crazy. No cocaine for me. <laughs> you wouldn't. Hey, you wouldn't believe this, but no one was offering me cocaine. I'll tell you who was offering. I went with two of my friends. I'm I'm Peruvian. I'm not Colombian, but I'm Peruvian. Um, and I went with two friends that are uh that are white, and one of them is a friend of mine who looks very. It's very easy for him to look like a douchebag. Mm-hmm. I mean, he um, he was wearing a lot of white linen pants on this trip. Ooh. He, you know, I mean, it was a good look for him. But of the three of us, he was getting offered cocaine. Because you were no one is asking. I was a little offended. Yeah. Honestly, I wasn't gonna have it, but I was like, hey, you know what? I could afford it. Yeah. But they were offering but him that's the like, cocaine. That's like you're in Colombia. You're wearing white, <laughs> white linen pants. You're a like, white man. Oh yeah, they know. It's like oh, this bitch is all Miami Vice up in yeah. here. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's very Miami Vice. Yeah, exactly. There were a lot of um, I like. It was very, you know, I was really. There was a great trip, but I remember we were at a restaurant. We saw a bunch of dudes that really were from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, there for their bachelor party. And I was what? like, ew, I can't escape you anywhere. Like, why aren't you in Atlantic City? Yeah, but they had come because they probably were coming in for hopes cocaine. Of doing some oh, drugs, some cocaine, some hookers, you know. Yeah. Uh, why else would you go to Colombia? <laughs> well, well, plastic surgery. Let though. me tell you, Colombia is one of the greatest places i've ever been on vacation really? for no drugs for no plastic surgery but for really good food and for for hiking and and everyone's very good looking i was gonna say because I, I live in jackson heights in queens and i have fucked a lot of colombian guys colombian guys are hot yeah i mean there's a lot of good looking colombian people um <laughs> and it's a beautiful country and i highly recommend it. they have the most miss universes too not surprising to me at all yeah doesn't surprise me and i would happily go back Okay, but interestingly, uh, when you didn't I didn't do any cocaine, I didn't do any cocaine, and when I went there, I was hoping to meet um, a Latino man. I mean, for me, often what happens is, yeah, uh, definitely the, there'll be white men that are like, "Oh, you're so exotic." Um, coincidentally, my boyfriend's white, <laughs> but guess <laughs> what? I went to Colombia, and I was like, "I'm gonna meet myself, a, you know, a sexy Colombian man." And I attracted the attention of a white Canadian man who turned out to be like white supremacist level racist. Oh, However, shit. I didn't discover it until after we had sex. Is oh. it he just call you like a S word while you were banging? How did you no. discover that here's, he's a white supremacist? Here, here's how it was discovered uh, in Pillow Talk. So, uh, oh, so oh, after, um, after the deed, was when I decided it's it's too early for me to kick him out of this hotel room where my my friend in with the white linen pants let us stay. He was uh, didn't want to share a room, so he got his own room and then switched and slept in the same room with his friend so that I could Uh-oh. have this room. It was very nice of him. Your friend, your friend sounds fancy. He's very nice, very nice. Uh, and so I was like, it's too early for me to kick this guy out. So then we started talking about where we were from, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm Canadian, but I live in Shanghai. And so he starts talking about how he usually dates Asian women. And I was like, I shouldn't even touch this with a 10 foot pole. This can't lead. Why should I even talk? Ask him. Wh- but there's wh- oh. like a comic in you that's like, tell me more. Of course. And I was <laughs> like, yeah. oh, you all. and he was like, well, but, you know, I'm in Colombia. You know, I mean, you're you're he was like, you're so beautiful. You you look like Sofia Vergara, which is not true, by the way. That's like to me, the equivalent of telling any Latino woman she looks like Sofia Vergara is like telling any like schlubby white dude they look like Seth Rogen. Like, to me, that's, like, a very big generalization. And so then he told me how exotic I was. And then he started talking about his ex-girlfriend. He was like, yeah, you know, my ex-girlfriend was, um, she was Asian, but she was from California. Um, she was, like, Cal- you know, Chinese-American. She wanted to have children, but I didn't want to have half Asian babies with her because I didn't want to tarnish my bloodline. That is a direct uh, quote. Oh, that, is a direct quote. that is a direct quote. Okay, post intercourse. I, I talk about this on stage a lot, so it's not that. No, it's crazy mm-hmm. to talk. Yeah, about. Yeah. No, that's so great. Isn't that crazy? Um, I had an Irish yeah. guy tell me I look like Mel B. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I guess for him, see, to me, what that we well, you know what that makes me think. He thought to himself, as a white man, he's like, let me think of just a hot black woman 
the only one I can think of and throw it your way. I don't know. It just it's seems like, like such a generalization. Because you look like you're a foot and a half shorter than, of course. than Sophie. I'm, fi- I'm five feet tall. And I'm like a foot shorter than Mel B. Sure. I'm also like probably 75 pounds heavier. Like, <laughs> Well, separately from that, it's to me. I was going to say, I feel like you guys have the same nose. Um, that would be my doctors doing. (laughs) 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 Oh boy. Yeah. I did kick him out of that room. Um, and I believe I don't blame you tarnished the bloodline. Like what the the fuck? And I'm really tired. You need to go. Bye bye Hitler. (laughs) Bye bye Hitler. Um, he gave me his Yahoo email address. Unle- if this is real, I never tried emailing it, but it was um, Richie is the bomb at yahoo.com. I swear. No, he did I not. I swear. And then, <laughs> and then I found him on Facebook because he kept telling me he was an entrepreneur, which to me is usually code for I don't actually have a real job. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's one of these guys. Or a drug dealer. Or a drug dealer. But he, he's one of these guys that makes videos and says really vague things like, I can make your life better and like appeals to lonely men. So... Um, we can find his Facebook page later because he has followers. It's frightening. Oh, God. I know. Ugh. I know. You know what? My first clue should have been that when I met him, it was in a parking lot after a so- we were watching a soccer game. And he said he had specifically come to South America to go to Peru so he could trip on ayahuasca. That's a so, big thing. Apparently it is. Yeah. So, like, I've talked to, like... And I feel like that's like a middle-aged white dude thing. Oh, sure. So like Mm -hmm. I've met like quite a few um, middle-aged white dudes that uh, are all on this like, I'm on a spiritual journey and I'm going to go to South America and trip on ayahuasca and find my personal demons. And like it's like a thing for like I, I don't know anyone under the age of 45 that does that. You like I don't disposable know disposable income. Yeah, like I don't know how yourself. old this dude was, but like every guy that I've yeah, ever like met 30. has been like he says he's 30. Uh yeah. has been right. like, like, white and like f- at least 45 and up and all entrepreneurs um and and it's just like oh, I just felt like having a spiritual journey so we just went to like South America to, like you know, do ayahuasca and find out what's holding me back. It's like, uh, you are. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Give me the money you are going to use to trip on ayahuasca so I can pay my rent. And it's like, and I will tell you, well, you're holding house. yourself sure. back. Well, that's how I think of Burning Man. It's the uh, same thing. I yeah. always imagine. I mean, Does that still happen? Yes. yes. It's very yes. popular. And oh. last year it was like infested with bugs. <gasps> Ew. Yeah. You, you need to have money. It's so ridiculous because you go, essentially, seemingly from what I've heard, you go to do drugs in the desert, look at some art, but it's like 50,000 people. You ha- you have to like bring your own food. There's no showers mm-hmm. and you're living in filth, but you have to pay so much money to do that. It sounds to horrible. To be around the kind of people that want to do that and have that much money. I don't know. To I'm do going it. to Coachella this year to see Beyonce and I'm feel <gasps> like... I'm jealous. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm nervous about the whole situation a little bit because it's Coachella. Like, it's Coachella. Well, it's going to be all right. But it's not camping, though, right? Yeah. I'm not camping. I'm it's, getting a hotel. It's not Burning Man. You're not going yeah. to my thirties. I can't do like some of you. I was laying in bed with my regular. And he Your was rags like, for yeah, real? My rags, yeah. He was like, oh, okay, so you're going to like camp out? And I was like, fuck that. I'm in my thirties. Yeah. I'm going to Coachella. I'm getting a hotel. Absolutely. You can come back to my hotel after we see Beyonce. Oh, you yeah. should never feel bad. That's like, the if only you can reason. It, like, do good things for yourself. Yeah. I personally. I mean, I'm only going because Beyonce is performing. Hey, you don't need to defend yourself. I'm personally saying I feel like I would never go to specifically Burning Man. It's not a festival either. There's no music. And you're there for almost a full week. It's yeah, that's a lot. Much. Like I oh. went to what is it? Woodstock it's like '99. Art. It's just the art. Like, art yeah, it's like an art exhibit in the desert. Like I went to like Woodstock in '99, and we camped out, and it was disgusting. Like it was just kind of like the first night we were there. Like all of the porta potties were overfilled, that's so crazy. like you had to go like searching out a porta potty that wasn't like to the brink 
And Ew. then y- y- porta potties are deep. Yeah, they're awful. Oh god. Yeah, I mean that talking that's a lot of shit. Ooh. To the brim. I mean you <laughs> what? literally like you'd get in the porta potty and that shit was up to the seat. And oh, like you gotta shit on top of shit. <laughs> But you gotta like be able to balance so that you're not like in the shit while you're trying to go to. The b- it was a lot. It was a lot. So like, so then, no toilet paper, no water, no showers. Like my friends and I, like we brought in, we each brought in like a twelve pack of of toilet paper because we're just like we're gonna need TP in this bitch, and. I literally was selling rolls of toilet paper for 20 bucks. Like, because nobody had toilet paper. And, like, I'd come online and I had, like, a roll of toilet paper in my hands. And someone, like, somebody was, like, looked like they were, like, 40 or something. I'd be like, oh, can I buy your toilet paper? I'm like, you got 20 bucks? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, here you go. I'm taking some, like, you know, like, literally. I was, like, literally selling rolls of toilet paper for, like, 20 bucks. Then, like, we brought in our own water because, like, we were just like, yeah, we don't know how much water they're going to have in here. We should probably bring water. And, like, we brought in our own booze. Like, we, like, they literally. Let you keep all that stuff? I thought they confiscated it. This so, in, this was oh, back so in 99. Sure. So, it's, like, pre. It oh, that, that's, like, pre-9-11. Yeah, it was oh, pre-9-11. Yeah. Oh, and God. basically. Time. Back when just, shit was just easy. Yeah. yeah. We both had tank tops on and we talked to the dudes. We're like, oh, we got this stuff. We need help. Can you roll this in for us? And they're like, okay. Like, wow. you know, yeah. It was like before, like, um, America was like, like, oh, the terrorists are going to blow it. Like, it was a lot of shit. But when we were there, um, so like, we, we got lost trying to find our tent. And then, like, finally we found our tent. And there was this long line of people in front of our tent. And we didn't realize that they were actually going into our tent. But this guy, like, went into our tent and started selling nitrous balloons out of our tent. And so, like... What? Yeah. So, like, we're, like, literally, like... Oh. This long line of people going back to the tents. And then, like, we're just, like... Oh, those people are in our tent. So, like, we just, like, walked in the... There's people, like... The back of the line is there. We're like, this is our fucking tent. And they're like, oh, sorry, man. Like, you can go in your tent. And so, like, then the guy's got the tank. And he's like, oh, the line's over there. And I literally, like, motherfucker, you're in my tent. And so, yes. like, he's just like, oh, sorry, bro. Like, uh, you want a balloon? And I'm like, you're going to stay right here. If any of my shit is missing, it's your fucking ass. And then he's just like. Nah, dude, I'm not like that. I wouldn't, like, take your shit. I'm like, you just what? took my fucking tent. And she's like, no, nah, like, it's not like that. And I was just like, bro. And I'm like, you're paying rent. And then he's just like, what? And I'm like, 50 bucks. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> All right. You know what you were doing. What's this mess? Sounds Entrepreneur. great. Entrepreneur. Yeah. You, you find money where it lands. Entrepreneur. <laughs> Listen, that's what that word means. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man, 20 bucks for a roll of toilet paper. That's some good money right there. Absolutely. Man, I'm, I'm going to come with a roll of toilet paper to Coachella then. I'm telling Okay, so here's what you need. You need baby wipes, toilet paper, and water. And you're going to be fucking making your money back on your tickets. I'm curious okay. if they'll let you bring Why water baby in. wipes? It always gets confiscated when I go to any festival. Because it's like everybody wants baby That's wipes. That's the whole thing I'm nervous. I've never been like this big of a festival before. Mm. And like a really. So. Stay hydrated. Well, I agree. That's yeah. Like you really got to stay important. hydrated. The other thing that I would suggest is that if you have a book bag and it has a lining in it. Oh. That's all I'm saying. It makes life easy for everyone. Uh, so, uh, are you a big fan of Ellen Page? I like Ellen Page. I, um, it's. I think I get bored of. I'll admit that I get bored reading important news. I think I often, for some reason, maybe I'm a bit of a romantic. <laughs> I get caught up in uh, celebrity love lives. Hi, I love celebrity news. Like I'm all about it. It's right, and so for with Ellen Page, um, I maybe I 
was uh, naive. I didn't know that she was gay until she came out. And she had been linked to men in the past. Like guys that I was like, whoa, man, those are hot guys. Like she, she was linked to, I think, Michael Fassbender at one point. Really? And, um, oh, Alexander Sarsgaard. He's like, so Oh, hard. my I know, God. Right? And like, it was, and, yeah, and he's like. That mm. like. I got a, I got a little woody. But like, she never dated any. Like, these were all co-stars and things that people were making up because they were. It was a man and a woman, right? Um, and then separately from that, then she came out. Um, and then I'll, just, you know, I don't know. She just lives. I know that Instagram is not real and nobody's life is as perfect, but it's just. It seems like things are great for her, and you know, I'd fo- I would like end up like following. You know, what's going on in Ellen Page's life? It appeared that she was dating um, like a surfer, like a tall blonde surfer woman for like a really long time. And then I, I, I hadn't caught up with Ellen Page until yesterday. People magazine said she got married and I was like, well, she must have married the surfer. And then um, I looked on her Instagram and no, she didn't. She broke up with um, the person that I thought she was with less than a year ago. And now she's married to someone else. So that sent shockwaves down my spine but that's awesome was I it know, a woman I'm, yeah 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 yeah. she got okay. married to a woman she got married and to a woman that's awesome well that's the thing is that did she look like the surfer no no she was like a like a shorter, regular person like regular yeah not statuesque uh and like a, a brunette like alan page and it was very surprising it's like i can't well, they say that like the most successful relationships are people that look like your siblings really where i'm like curious. yeah no like it's that. it's i i read really? it in a lot of like psychology um like kind of articles that like the most successful like marriages relationships usually end up with someone that looks like your sibling now do you mean like the way you act and the way you dress or like like facial features no like physically looks like they're related to you wow Wow. I'd have to find someone super short because I'm five feet tall. Yeah, but you could have a sibling that's taller than you, but like they might have the same coloring as you sure. or they might be the yeah. same, like you know, like Peruvian background. Or, like yeah. Five well, seven. you know, it's interesting. I don't know. I guess it's a different experience for everyone. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm getting off the topic of Ellen Page. <laughs> no, um, you're fine. No, it's all right. But she's hitting me with the, you get the fuck off of here soon. Um, oh, yeah. It's, it's okay. But yeah, go finish your Ellen Page thought and then we'll my wrap Ellen it up. Page thought is I'm happy for her. And, you know, I don't know much about marriage. I've never been married. Um, but I, I hope, I wish her the best. I wish you the best, Ellen Page. I'd like to be friends with you. You seem pretty cool. Oh, she, really, oh. she has a really cool show on Vice called Gaycation. Have you ever seen it? Really? It's great. It's her and her best... Viceland? Viceland. It's her and her male best friend. And they what? go to different countries and talk to people about what it's like to be gay in those countries. Mm. And it's really interesting. I gotta look that up. Viceland is like my new like shit. Like, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff on there's there. There's some good stuff on there. Most expensive with like fucking... Uh, Ooh. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, two Chains is... Two chains. Two chains. He's right. like the host of the show, but like he like visits the most expensivest shit ever. Do you I know that there that. is a donut that you can eat that they make in Brooklyn that has gold flakes on it for a thousand dollars? I think I heard. No, about I did it. not. Not surprised. And you see it, and he eats it, and you're just like, "Fuck!" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna shit out gold." <laughs> like, I mean that sounds kind of cool. Love you two chains <laughs> Alright I'll check it out So uh, Anita before we go Where can everyone see you next Your next shows Where can they follow you on social media So um, I have a monthly show Called Party of Two It is a uh, It's like a kind of comedy show based around dating and romance um and my friend vanessa and i host that show at the pleasure chest which is a sex shop on second avenue uh in manhattan in the basement where they teach the classes because they teach classes there on how to give blowjobs and everything else you want to know about sex but we have our monthly show it's on january 20th at the pleasure chest it's a great show we have free wine take the wine it's from trader joe's you know so it's is it top shelf wine no it isn't 
but it's wine and it's and free. And it's yummy. And I it's love yummy. Trader Joe's wine. I do too. Um, so yeah, so that show's on January it's 20th. It's free wine. It's free wine. So check that show out. Um, and then I'm hosting another new show called I Didn't Have Cable, Okay? And that show is about um, shows that I watched growing up because I didn't have cable. Um, and I am hosting that show with my friend Calvin Cato, who's a very funny comedian. Oh, I love Calvin. I love him. I love him. Um, and he also didn't have cable growing up. So that show is going to be on February 3rd. But for all that kind of all those details and stuff, you should follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Anita Jutina, A-N-I-T-A-J-E-W-T-I-N-A, because I'm Jewish and Latina. So all that's right. why I'm Anita Jutina. Jutina. And my last plug, I am launching my own podcast next month called I'm Listening. It is ultra specific and it is um, in, it's talking to people about my, one of my favorite shows growing up, Frasier. And it's called Love I'm, I'm, Frasier. And it's called I'm Listening. So that's what I'm doing. Love it. Next month. Love Frasier. Glad to um, hear. Rodney. What's up? I'm hosting at the Broadway Comedy Club next week, next Friday night, 930. Fashion will be funny. You can catch me. And Marissa Smith. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm at Merriment and Mortification at Auto Shrunken Head, 630 on January the 12th. Fashionably Funny at Broadway Comedy Club. And on January 20th, I'm on Mothballs at the Pit. This has been Big Talking Brewskies. I'm Marissa Smith. Follow me on at Marissa Smith on Twitter. Follow the show on at Big Talking Brew on Twitter. And remember, you guys... Even Bannon thought it was treason. Go fuck yourself, Trump. Have a good night. Have a good weekend. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And keep warm. Love you. See you next week.